Network. ISIS is now claiming responsibility for the Easter bombings in Sri Lanka as chilling new video of one of the bomb suspects has been released. The video that you're seeing on your screen right now shows one of the suspects wearing a blue shirt and a backpack walking into St. Anthony's Shrine in Colombo shortly before the explosions. Meanwhile, Sri Lankan officials said that the attacks that killed more than 300 people were in response to the mosque attacks in New Zealand in March. Joining me now to discuss founder and president of the American Islamic Forum, Zudi Jasser. Thank you so much for joining me today, Zudi. Just the fact that ISIS has claimed responsibility when we thought that they were losing ground, what does that tell us? Well, it's good to be with you, Christina. And, you know, it tells us that the war against ISIS is going on more than it ever has. Uh, they may have lost territory in Syria and may have been obliterated in Raqqa and Iraq, uh, but they shift. They're shifting their focus. Uh, we saw that there was a foiled attack in Saudi Arabia. They have reconstituted in Congo. They had an attack in Kabul, Afghanistan. Uh, so bottom line is, is this is a, not only was Sri Lankans vulnerable because of their security apparatus that obviously had multiple failures, but there was a message sent on East which is the ISIS message of, of anti-Christianity, anti-Westernism, and anti diversity. So the, the ISIS uh, radical movement, if you will, is a whack-a-mole program and we have to realize that we need a strategy that, that is generational that begins to fight not just ISIS and Al-Qaeda but every permutation of the global jihad where Muslims begin to fight for liberty and freedom in lands like Sri Lanka and elsewhere so that we can protect the ideas of freedom against radical Islam and we have yet to really do that. So far it's simply been a, a, a security uh, a defense rather than offense. Well, speaking of security, you have the United States that's pledging some FBI um, investigators to go through this entire process. So you have countries that are working together, but what does that mean for security as a whole? Could that compromise the United States if they're going to look into this matter? Well, I think ultimately we have to fight this globally. Uh, this cell uh, took uh, however many, eight, nine people to commit an act from a little unknown group uh, uh, called Nation uh, Tawheed uh, Jamaat, uh, which basically attached itself to ISIS. So to keep, uh, uh, which is the greatest, I think, threat to ISIS, which is America safe, we have to be able to work with governments like Sri Lanka, Saudi Arabia, and others to begin to weed out the militants as they start to co coalesce in cells. But we also have to have our own uh, strategy globally, uh, which may not be at, at you know, synonymous with the strategy of the Saudis and others might be, in that at the end of the day, these regimes are not going to counter the ideology of radical Islam, but simply the manifestations of terrorism. And that's why we need to engage with a forward offense for freedom and liberty and religious diversity and protect religious minorities in all of these countries. Well, speaking of religious minorities, in Sri Lanka, you have, I think it's according to Sri Lankan uh, government over there, there's 40 people that have been arrested thus far, most of them Sri Lankan, but there seems to be a lot of calls coming forward that people are scared of anybody that is from a Muslim community. So what does this mean for the Muslim community? How can, and it's not just Sri Lanka, this is being broadcast around the globe, so how do, how do we make sure that that image uh, doesn't change narrative according to who's discussing the story? story. That is a great question, Christina, and, and our American Islamic Forum for Democracy is focused on that issue with a laser focus, which is the Muslim communities, where wherever we exist in the West, be it America, Britain, or Sri Lanka, need to have a tough love, if you will, in that we realize that the solution is going to come from within. We heard many of the mosques and others did report this radical group, but the security apparatus failed, so many Muslims were on the side of security and on the side of their nation, which was Sri Lanka in this case. But on the other hand, we also need to have a tough love and realize that the non-violent Islamists, the political separatists that are Islamists that believe in Sharia states and others across the world that, that hate the West, that hate Israel and spread conspiracy theories are the problem. They are the pool from which radical Islamists will pick terrorists and radicalize our community. So we need a tough love which is realize that we're part of the solution but also an ideological battle where the constituency for radical Islam is a quarter of the world's population so it's not just Sri Lanka, it's Congo, it's Saudi Arabia, it's, it's the UK, Denmark, Germany, and America. I feel like that's a poignant note to end on. Zudi Jasser, thank you very much thank for you. joining us. It's good to be with you, Christina. Thank you. It's the worst political.